Luoyue's Suzhou River is an urban tale which explores the thin line between reality and imagination. Through the use of cinematic techniques such as point of view shots, cutaway shots, and parallel plot lines to capture his perspective of contemporary Shanghai. The film was released in 2000 and can be said to reflect the liminal space residents of Shanghai occupied in the political flux experienced at the turn of a century. The plot revolves around the volatile romantic relationships between a motorcycle courier Ma Da, a vodka business owner's daughter Mo Dan, a nightclub performer Mei Mei, and the narrator. The girls in both relationships look almost identical, which allows for a blurred boundary between them where they function as mirrors of imagination in reality. Through the unfolding of both relationships, Sujo reverse straddles the boundary between reality and fiction as it invites the audience into an ambiguous tandem of subjectivity. The audience cannot disassociate Mo Dan from Mei Mei, and neither can the narrator. The differing points of view in the film facilitates the intercession between reality and imagination. The first person point of view of the narrator is in juxtaposition with the scenes captured in the third person point of view and Mata's own point of view. The narrator, who is never shown in the film physically, is constructed only through his disembodied voice and his monologue, which is conveyed through the form of a melancholic voiceover. There is no other interaction between the audience and the narrator. The only exceptions to this is when Lo employs the off-screen space to frame the narrator's hands or shadow in maison son. This highlights the integral role of the camera in the construction of the narrative. The narrator, who is also a videographer for hire, not only captures the unfolding events through his sight, but also through his camera. For example, in his relationship with Mei Mei, the narrator becomes a voyeur. The narrator is given full control over what the audience sees. The deliberate ambiguity of reality is portrayed through this very fact that the narrator is only capturing his experiences and conferring his limited perspective onto the narrative. I but with his camera, he captures his experiences in a first-person point of view, suggesting to the audience, this is his reality. The voiceover occasionally acts as a stream of consciousness, which reflects his interior mental landscape. This first-person reality in Suzhou River can be said to portray a certain reality in the context of the film, as the narrator cannot manipulate the scenes playing out in front of his camera. The limited framing of the scenes, which functions to create a first-hand experience for the audience. The narrator's perspective in Suzhou River acts as a form of concrete reality in the film as the audience is not prompted to blindly believe an omnipresent narrator with no credibility. Instead, the present, yet invisible narrator is not only a narrator, but a character who participates in the construction of the narrative. He lends the audience a point of view to make their judgment his own. And in this cinematic space, the audience functions in his reality. However, Lu lends significant weight to the unnamed narrator to act as an interlocutor for the Mata Motan storyline. He allows him to invent a story for the couple. By giving the narrator freedom to manipulate Mata's narrative, Lu Ye's digesis allows the narrator to confer his own imagined version of Mata and Motan's story. What 
和以前，也许。The narrator's voiceover betrays the reliability in his progressive disclosure of the narrative by using suppositional words like "maybe," "what if." The narrator himself imagines a fictional narrative where Mada and Modan reside. 还有别的事情发生。也许马达不单是一个送货的。也许那个叫萧红的女人也与码头黑道上的人有关系。All these are suggestions and not fact. The narrator imagines Mata and Motan's story, which becomes a fictional reflection of reality, and a fundamental foil to his relationship with Mei Mei in the film. In addition, when the narrator relinquishes narrative control to Mata, the plot begins anew, with Mata himself. Embracing the role of a storyteller instead of the narrator who dictates his plot. Then, how will he do? I don't know how to continue. Maybe this story should end here. The film ends with Mata and Mota continuing this story. The third-person point of view. Reveals an alternative cinematic space, which Mata and Modan occupy. Their world, encapsulated through the third-person point of view shots and close-up shots, reveals an immense romantic desire in a controlled atmosphere, suggesting that the Mata-Modan relationship is the archetypal romantic canon, but is ultimately only a work of fiction. This becomes a polar binary to Mei Mei and the narrator's relationship, as their relationship, while also captured by close-up shots, is characterized by spatial suffocation and deterioration. The narrator himself decides such a fantasy cannot pervade his romantic reality. But in contrast, through the third-person point of view, we also see how Mei Mei vies for a position within the fictional narrative. By engaging with Mata, throughout the movie, Mei Mei seems to constantly reject Mata's postulation that she is his dead lover, Mo Dan. She is in disbelief of his romance with Mo Dan, and even more disbelieving of her role in replacing her. However, Mei Mei caves into her desire for a fantastical romance and transcends the boundary. Between imagination and reality, by assuming the Modan role in a sexual encounter with Mada, she can only reconcile with reality again when she sees the dead bodies of Mada and Modan lying by Suzhou River. Eventually, after both Mada and Modan's death, there is no longer any third-person point of view. From this moment. The film progresses only in a first-person point of view of the narrator. Effectively, the imagined alternate cinematic space has died, just as Mata and Modan, who are probable figments of the narrator's invention, have died. This is also the climactic moment where Mei Mei objects to reality. She finally realizes Mata did not love her, but Modan. She reverts back to the disillusionment of knowing that she cannot achieve Modan's status. Her reality is that she reverses the imagination reality boundary. She now knows and comes to the conclusion that reality cannot encapsulate the fantasy that is love. It is significant to note that Lo frames certain scenes in Mata's first-person point of view. Allowing Mada the spatial authority to reimagine his own narrative. The scene 
where the narrator first sees Mei Mei is repeated in Ma Da's point of view when he follows her to the happy tavern. Ma Da's point of view is eerily similar to the narrator's. However, this time the shot is extended, showing Mei Mei fully transforming into the mermaid, where it previously did not in the narrator's point of view. This cinematic double creates a liminal space which Ma Da occupies. He imagines a parallel world that is familiar to the narrators and yet entirely juxtaposed. We are prompted to consider who is fictionalized, Mei Mei or Mo Dan, and in whose perspective, Ma Da or the narrator. Ma Da takes on the role of a narrator without the voiceover but it is through his perspective that we see certain scenes and allow us to truly contemplate on who is in control. Unlike conventional plots, in Suzhou River, the subjectivity of fiction in the digesis is situated in the third-person point of view rather than the first. The first-person point of view articulates some transcendence of reality and objectivity all relationships in the film, however, are mediated by the camera, where no one can tell imagination from reality, except the absolute power of the camera itself. But the objectivity of the camera is not cut and dry. Ultimately, the audience retains the autonomy to decide what is reality and what is imagined.